Hi guys and welcome to another devcast. Today it will be about Unity and Blender. And uh, it's basically me playing with and testing and maybe uh, reviewing a bit uh, a plugin that I discovered uh, created by uh, Unity Technologies uh, Japanese. Uh, it's uh, it's not something new. It, it's been in development for some time, but there is a very little information about it, uh, except maybe Unite, Unite the conference in Japan, and a lot of the information on the internet is in Japan uh, Japanese as well. So I I started to play with it a bit. What it does uh, a little intro is that it uh, synchronizes. Uh, uh, 3D program, 3D application with Unity. So there, is, there are a lot of plugins for all the DCC you know, programs like 3D Studio, Maya, Blender, and so on. And it basically synchronizes the state inside the 3D application into the Unity. It doesn't work. It's not a round trip. It doesn't work both ways. So if you change something in Unity, it's not reflected in the 3D application. Uh, you may be aware of uh, some demos uh, from Unity, uh, I think it was in Unite like two or three years ago, where they showcased the, the FBX round trip, where they basically exported uh, a state uh, from Unity with completely with animation into an FBX, using an FBX exp uh, exporter, and then uh, modified it inside, inside Maya, then imported it back into into Unity. It's basically the whole round trip. So this works a bit differently. This is actually a live server uh, running uh, that uh, connects these two applications. So the the changes are live. You don't really need to export, import anything. So I think it's a great tool, uh, but it has its issues as well. So let, let's start. As I said, you can download it on GitHub. It's an open source project uh, from Unity Japanese uh, called MeshSync. And then uh, I'm not going into the installation of it. You can install it using the using the information found here. And then, of course, there are these uh, plugins where the, uh, you can uh, download and install to your specific application. So as you can see, Maya, 3D Studio, Motion Builder, Blender, and Modo, and, and so on. So I'm going, uh, I'm using the Blender 2.93. Uh, uh, there is uh, no plugin for the Blender version 3.0 yet, so that's why I'm using uh, version 2.9. So I have uh, Unity running and I have uh, Blender running side by side. Uh, I'm using a prefab from my uh, uh, latest game, uh, Hackathon game about zombies. It's actually a bot asset uh, called Sci-Fi Turrets, I think, uh, a great asset on Asset Store. And uh, I exported one of these, uh, one of these. Uh, Objects, uh, uh, this one because this this asset is actually from uh, three meshes, and uh, this one is a skinned mesh actually, and this is a static, and this one is a static one. So I exported this static one using the uh, package um, FBX exporter from uh, from Unity, which you can easily install, and then I imported it into into Blender. That's what I said that this doesn't work both ways. So if you want to get this uh, geo into Blender, you need to export it first. Uh, if you are creating your assets inside Blender, you are safe because you, you started inside Blender, and so it's easy to get into, into Unity. But if you started with something in Unity and you want to modify it in Blender, you will need to export it using an FBX. And as I said, I have uh, the MeshSync server installed, uh, the plugin inside Unity. So there are some Basically, you can use the default settings. We, uh, I mean, where the server is on what port and and so on. What should be created? What should be, what should be synchronized? Then you need to install it into uh, into Blender as well. Unity Mesh Sync, enable it, and then you have you can find it here and. Again, specify the address where it's running. It's on localhost. It's a localhost TCP. 
uh, server and then I uh, specified what I want to synchronize by default oh, everything is synchronized I don't really want to synchronize cameras and lights I mean I don't need them and the light uh, the properties don't match I mean the visual fidelity inside Blender is different than inside Unity when I specified that I want to auto sync them there are a couple of issues actually working with it that you need to be aware of uh, so well, let me show you I will disable this uh, uh, this prefab and I will only work on the on the synchronized part so the it's synchronized under the sync server uh, so as you can see it's uh, it's basically these two uh, synchronized into into unity and uh, once I, for example, switch into edit mode, this will automatically synchronize, obviously, but it will look different. So let me show you. So let's uh, let's switch to vertices. Uh, you can modify, but you can see right away that these these UVs are all all over the place. They actually don't don't really match this. This is nicely. Uh, nicely mapped this is not uh, first I uh, thought that this is an issue it obviously is an issue but it's not as bad as one would think because if I if I check the uh, UV sets the unwrapping it, it looks like this uh, and if I check on on this mesh inside unity which to the UV layout you see that some of them are missing. Actually, the the whole part that's that's wonky is is miss, is missing. The this part uh, to the right is missing as well. So it's definitely some kind of an error, but it only happens only happens uh, if you are in uh, in edit mode. So let me switch to okay. So for example, let's edit something. Let's go here and move this part so you should see that it's actually getting synchronized and once I switch to object mode the UV sets are correct again so you can you can switch to edit mode move the vertices switch to <laughs> switch to object mode and it's it's correct again so that that is an issue but it's another critical one since it's it gets corrected so you can work around around that so let me show you a bit let's play with this a bit what i what i did uh, i have this turret uh, prefab as i said inside uh, inside my project and i don't really want to work with my prefab under the under the sync server so i created a mesh hack utility a great name which basically connects the the two meshes uh, this one will be specified as a source it's the one that's getting synced from uh, from blender and this one will be a target so it will get basically it will get synced from blender into this mesh and then it will get synced by my utility into this mesh so i can i can uh, experiment inside the mesh sync server and uh, still get the information link it or unlink it from my prefab as well so let me hide this and i can also show you that it works in in actually in runtime so let's run it and let's uh, link the invisible mesh with that, that synced from blender into unity and now let's play with it a bit so again if I modify this, it gets synced into this one, and that gets synced into this one, and it will work even at even at runtime. So let's let's play with it a bit. So I can I can show you. I think this is a preferred way for me to edit meshes instead of using something like ProBuilder or other tools that are inside Unity, because uh, I mean a lot of artists are familiar with. 
uh, with Blender way more than the, the tools inside Unity. So I think this is a great add-on. As we can see, there is, a, there is this intersection with these two meshes. So I'm going to fix that. And Blender is also free, so you can... Uh, Everybody can work with that, so it's easy to to jump on it. And now with the latest add-ons, it's really it's getting really really good. I wasn't that much of a fan before the before the latest add-ons, especially due to the shortcuts and so on. But I think it's great, and uh, it can definitely help you with. Uh, with modifying your your assets and it also unlocks a lot of a lot of tools that I plan to play with inside uh, uh, inside the un uh, Unity once you get synchronized because you will get any mesh from here so I can get a mesh data here and then play with it uh, it's it just plays to my procedural nature so let's modify a bit. Uh, bit more for example this eye I want it to protrude more okay and I don't really want this one to protrude, protrude as much I'm just playing with that with it just for, for for fun. I don't really need to modify it that much. So if you want to, you obviously can. I can also link, for example, this one. I'm not going to do that, but it's it would be easy. Uh, again, export it in the using the using the FBX, export to FBX and then uh, load it here and then it will get synchronized as this one. And then obviously I would need an, another hack utility to, to link it, but I can do this that it takes arrays or array of sources and array of targets as well. So uh, it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be an issue. I want to talk about uh, skinned meshes as well because that's what I uh, played actually uh, with it as, as my first attempt and there are some um, uh, rather big issues with it. It works. It, it can synchronize uh, skinned mesh into, into Unity but there are, the, there are a couple of issues. The, the vertices don't really match for some reason uh, I don't know I will play with it uh, a bit more so I wasn't able to to basically match the uh, the modified mesh to the to the correct bones inside inside unity one, using the hag utility to sync it because I wanted to sync it to an existing uh, skinned mesh renderer just by, by modifying the vertices I don't really wanted to modify the bones the weights inside uh, inside the uh, blender and uh, the the information even though I exported the skinned mesh using the FBX exported it loaded it inside blender and synchronized it into unity the bone structure was different uh, so I would need to reindex the bones actually and uh, play with it a bit uh, seems uh, like the the data wasn't in a really good shape to to share between the original uh, skin and mesh I exported it from uh, with the with the synced uh, skin and mesh from blender I don't know why I can I will definitely play with it uh, there may be some issue uh, with the with the edit mode as well uh, 
uh, because when I played with it, I didn't know about this issue once it's this inside the edit mode, the, the UVs get uh, broken. So th that may be an issue as well inside the scanned meshes. So I'll definitely play with that as well. And maybe I will also uh, publish another devcast uh, modifying uh, s skeleton mesh. So if, if you already played with it and uh, got it working with the skeletal meshes that were firstly exported from Unity, because once you have this, uh, when you, as I said, when you start in uh, Blender and then uh, synchronize into Unity, you are okay. The, the, the data will be okay because you don't really want to synchronize or, or basically bind the data from, from the Blender into a different data in Unity, which is what I'm doing, but uh, if you wanted to, for example, export the skinnet mesh into Blender, then synchronize it and then bind it into an existing animation and bone structure as well, there are issues. I will definitely check it out. If you played with it and know what are the issues or encountered them and have a workaround, uh, let me know. Also, if you have any other questions about this tool, uh, which I think is great, I will definitely uh, uh, keep looking at it uh, for some time because we are trying to switch to Blender inside our company as well, uh, because Blender matured a lot, uh, uh, especially uh, last couple of years, so we'll see. And as usual, if you have any feedback and any questions, uh, don't hesitate and let me know. Thank you.